Well, well, there you are. Oh, hi everybody! Happy New Year! Haven't seen you all year. <laughs> Where you been all year? I literally haven't seen hi nor hair of you this entire year. Okay, great. Enough of the corny dad jokes. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. A very happy 2022 to you from me, Timothy Dunn. Here you go. Come bid me a fond 2022 on Twitter if you're someone who likes to go on Twitter and bid game show hosts glad tidings for a happy and prosperous new year this is one to win you are whoever you are and i am so happy to be here with you today today is friday january 7th 2022 our first friday of the new year yeah huh? you have a good uh, new year's eve did you slip into your tuxedo and do a little champagne toast with your lover at midnight or did you maybe watch fireworks from your catamaran on the Mediterranean? Or did you play board games in your living room in your tie-dye sweatpants from Old Navy and eat enough cheese and homemade pigs in a blanket to shore up all the cracks in the Hoover Dam? No judgment either way, because all of those options sound gorgeous and very glamorous. And yes, I am very still into tie-dye. Oh, and I have more great news for you folks, because today in New York. Want to see some beautiful pictures of my pups in the snow? Good news! I took a million and here they are. Pups in the snow. Pups in the snow. Uh, we have uh, Angie's pup from Twitter. She sent me some a little pup pics, which I do enjoy so dang much. My pups, Johnny Cash, the Wheaton Terrier. Oh, look how nice Johnny is. And Taco, my little tiny taco party. Dogs in the snow, aren't they the best? And honestly, I can't think of a better way to kick off the new year than to give you a little spending cash. So today, let's go ahead and play for a prize pot of 50 dang dollars. And let's put it three ways. 25 bucks to our first place winner, $15 to our second place winner, and $10 for our bronze. Those are some great prize amounts. You could make and send me a tie-dye sweatshirt for $25. Pretty easily, actually. Not that, you know, you have to, or not that you'd want to, but, you know, I'm just here for color commentary. So if anyone wants to, you know, send me a sweatshirt, maybe. Oh, I saw Rainbow, too! Angie, I know! Oh, isn't it nice to see our dogs featured on trivia games? Oh, I love it. Wait a minute. Did I accidentally log on to a show called Tie-Dye Dogs in the Snow? Or is this one to win trivia? Because... Okay, no, yes, we're going to play trivia right now, friend, and of course, in case you are new here, here is how we play. One to win trivia are the rules. In just a second, I'm going to be asking you 12 general knowledge trivia questions, and I'm going to give you 10 seconds to tap on the correct answer on your screen. If you tap wrong, no big deal. You can change your answer within the 10 second window that we give you. The more questions you get right, and the faster you do it, the closer you will be to winning our top prize today. And remember, there is no eliminations in this game. So if you get a question wrong, don't worry. Like, keep playing. It's not a big deal because time is of the essence in this game. And prizes will be awarded to the players who get the most questions right in the least amount of time. That makes sense, right? Of course it does. And let me just say it before you tweet it at me. Some of these questions are going to be really hard. All right, like uh, you're probably not gonna know the answer to a bunch of these, but that's okay. That's kind of part of the thrill of the game, you know? If you immediately knew every answer to every question, like, would that be fun or would that be just like doing something else? Because a game is like the chance, you know what I mean. So some of these questions, what I'm saying is, go are they going to stump you? And that's by design. So there is no penalty for guessing though. So go with your gut, change your answer if you need to within the 10 second window and who knows? Hey, maybe you'll be our big winner today. Maybe today's your day to be our first place winner. You know, if you're ready to win today, type the word win into the chat. Let's see if there's any winners in the chat. Let's get the good vibes flowing. Let's start the new year strong. Okay, we have a really fun game. There's our wins. We have a really fun game for you, everybody. Uh, happy new year. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate everyone spending this time with me every week. And here we go. It's time for question one. 
Good luck, friends. Here we go. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, Q1. In mathematics, which operation is the opposite of addition? Is it division, multiplication, or subtraction? In mathematics, what operation is the opposite of addition? That's how we do a Q number one. We give you one that's a little easy and we see how you play the game. That's right, subtraction is the opposite of addition. And it looks like we have 89 one to winners who got that one correct. Two thought division, two thought multiplication, and they were wrong. So that's how it works. Um, the good news, if the microphone drops out, all you have to do is read the screen, everybody. So like, I, I have like fun, nice things to say, I think. And like, I think I'm funny, but like if the sound drops out, don't worry about it. Just tap on the screen and we'll be fine. Okay, there we go. Question two, question two, what is the most common eye color for humans worldwide? Is it blue, brown, or hazel? What is the most common eye color for humans worldwide? That's time right there, human anatomy, people. Aren't bodies beautiful and disgusting? Do you know that most people in Estonia have blue eyes? It's actually the country with the most blue-eyed people in the world. 90% of Estonians have blue eyes. Ever heard of it? But if you look at the worldwide numbers, they tell a different story. The most common eye color in the world is actually brown. That's our answer for Q2 brown. How now, brown cow? 91 to winners got that one correct. Good job. And speaking of eyes, another sight-related question. Mmm, a segue. Do you like a segue? Question number three. Here we go. Which type of colorblindness are women most likely to be affected by? Is it deuteronomaly, protonomaly, or neither? Oh, I trip over that every time. Deuteronomaly or protonomaly, or neither? You can read it, so it's fine. I don't have to. Pr I don't have to pronounce everything correctly. You know what I mean? Uh, have you ever heard someone say that women can't be colorblind? Well, it turns out that that's not entirely right. So if you tapped on neither, sorry. The genes responsible for most common forms of colorblindness are on the X chromosome, which women have two of. So typically, even if one chromosome has the gene. The other one makes up for it. But there's a slim chance that both chromosomes will have the defect. So it really boils down to the most common type of colorblindness in general, deuteronomaly, also known as red-green color blindness. 31 to winners getting closer to getting some of the green. And 43 of you are seeing red because you guessed neither. But that's how it works, you know? You learn something new every quiz, I guess, right? Let's keep it moving with question numero quattro. Number four. Question four. Which country famously issued a $100 trillion note? Is it Jamaica, Taiwan, or Zimbabwe? A $100 trillion note. Mamma mia, $100 trillion. <laughs> That's a whole lot of money, right? Well, we're not talking about U.S. dollars here. 100 million U.S. dollars would actually be even more money than the world's GDP. Literally more money than there is in the world. So here's what happened. In an attempt to, to count, combat hyperinflation, one of these countries introduced a $100 trillion note back in 2009. As you might have expected, it didn't go so well. And this country ended up abandoning their currency altogether. But where did this happen, Tim? I'll tell you, it was Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is the answer. 72 one to winners knew the answer to that one. Uh, eight of you thought Jamaica. You can think that. You're wrong, but you can think that. Uh, let's keep it moving. I, and truthfully, as I, as I mentioned, I did not know the answer to that question. Oh, oh, and someone was asking in the chat earlier, so I'll just remind you, you all got a gift, a Happy New Year's gift of binoculars here on One to Win, and the binoculars tool can be used during any question to see what other players are guessing. So it's sort of one of those, like, pull the audience-ish. You see what everyone else is guessing. You can hedge your bets. So go ahead and use the binoculars. If you have them, enjoy. They were a New Year's gift from Jesus to you. So thank Jesus. I didn't do it. I just stand up here and 
talk, I guess. I don't know. Let's move on to Q5. Q5, where did the failed restoration of the Ecce Homo fresco happen? Where did the failed restoration of the Ecce Homo fresco happen? Was it France, Italy, or Spain? That's time. Ah, the fresco fiasco. You see, back in 2012, an elderly churchgoer got fed up with their fresco getting more ruined by the day, in huge part because of moisture. Moisture is the enemy of the fresco. So she thought, hey, I'll fix it to myself. I'll fix it myself after all. I've already restored parts of it before, so what could go wrong? You know, well, it turns out she left it unfinished for a couple of weeks while she went on a holiday. And everyone saw her work in progress, which became a worldwide viral sensation, jokingly dubbed as the Echi Mono by many. Here's what it looked like. You remember this one? Yeah. All right. It looks familiar, right? Well, the whole thing went down in the tiny town of Borja. Spain. Spain is the answer we are looking for. Spain, if you want to pronounce it that way. 73 won to winners. Knew that. Spain and Spain were the correct answer. Oh, I remember that. I I watched that documentary, The Last Leonardo or The Forgotten Leonardo about the Leonardo da Vinci painting, the Salvador Mundi. They were watching it. It's a fun documentary. It's worth watching. I love art questions. Oh, art questions. Aren't I so cultured? Let's keep it going. Q6. Q6. What were the colors of the infamous dress that went viral in 2015? Was it? Black and blue, white and gold, or neither. Remember that dress? That's time right there. 2015, was it that long ago? Seven years ago, mama? Yeah. You surely remember that dress, right? Let's give a little picture. There you go, a rather awful phone picture posted by a Tumblr user that actually baffles scientists to this day. Showed a fancy dress, that divided the internet in two. Some people claimed they saw it as black and blue, and others thought it was white and gold. What colors do you think it is? Hmm, let us know in the chat. In the meantime, I'll let you know that someone actually tracked down the company that sold this dress, and they found out the real colors were blue. Blue is the answer we were looking for. For Q631, one to winners got that correct. 41 of you thought it was white and gold. Now, I probably would have just guessed because I saw both. I saw both of those. Uh, and like, it's like when you see the horse running forward or backwards or whatever that thing is. It's a mind trick, everybody. We're going to be okay. 2022, let's not have any more confusing dresses. Let's just have like easy dresses in 2022. That's my, that's my request to the world. Let's give it a Q7. Q7. Word game has recently been making waves on social networks. Is it Hangman, Wheel of Fortune, or Wordle? Which word game has been recently making waves on social media? I suspect that many of you will know the correct answer to this one. If you've been on Twitter in the past few weeks, you've surely seen a lot of people posting the pictures of, you know, gray and yellow and green squares. The squares, what do the squares mean, Tim? I will tell you. Well, this game consists of trying to guess a five letter word. And the game will tell you if you guessed the right letter, but in the wrong place if you guessed it completely right, or if the letter isn't in the word at all. It's kind of like mastermind, but with letters instead of colors. Does that make sense to you? Okay, good. The game went viral last month, and if you're in the loop, you'll surely know. Wordle went viral. 66 one to winners got that one correct. 12 thought Hangman, 12 thought Wheel of Fortune. And guess what? Those are all great games. They should, they should all go viral. Let's make all games go viral in 2022. Starting with one to win. Let's move on to Q8. Q8. What is the name of the latest film directed by M. Night Shyamalan? Is it After Earth, Last, or Old? M. Night Shyamalan. Do you know those movies? Oh boy, that's time right there. Now, M. Night Shyamalan. M. Night Shyamalan is a pretty famous filmmaker and actor whose films are known for having crazy plot twists and turns. And After Earth is the oldest film in this list, which came out in 2013, and it was widely panned by critics. That's okay, it doesn't really matter though, it still made money, do you know what I mean? The newest film, the latest film, and the answer for this question is... Old. That's 
for a plot twist. We got 58 Wonder Winners knew that one. It was a good movie, I thought. I love these movies. They kind of always, I, my, they always get me. 19 thought Glass and 14 thought After Earth. Um, give a round of sound to M. Night Shyamalan, you know? They're, they're, they're creative, even if they're not your cup of tea. Those movies are creative. Okay, let's move on. Q9. Q9. Which of these songs was not released in the 2010s? Bad Guy, Blinding Lights, or Shape of You? Which of these songs was one? And then. One in this list was Ed Sheeran's biggest hit yet, Shape of You, which you'll remember came out in the late 2010s, 2017 to be exact. Now we can roll that one out. So the next song to come out was Billie Eilish's Bad Guy. It was actually one of the most streamed songs of the year in 2019. So by elimination, the correct answer is Blinding Lights. And 50 of you weren't blinded by the light. In this question, it's if I need to do touch. Oh, great. Oh, the weekend. Oh, the weekend. It's coming soon. And one the winners got that one correct. Guessing blinding light, blinding lights. Are you a weekend fan? I think I like the weekend. He has like a really talented uh, thing going on. Anyway, no one asked him. I don't care. Let's move on. Let's go to Q10. Q10. What was the first company in the world to reach two? trillion dollars in market value was it apple ibm or saudi aramco first company in the world to reach two trillion dollars in market value that is a lot of cheddar cheeses apple recently made headlines after becoming the first company in the world to reach three trillion dollars in market value it didn't last very long though it's now back down to 2.82 trillion which isn't bad 2.82 trillion but it's still pretty noteworthy, especially considering they hit two trillion in August of 2020. But did you know they actually weren't the first company to reach two trillion? It's not a very widely known fact that back in December 2019, an oil and gas company became the first two trillion dollar company, Saudi Aramco. Saudi Aramco is the answer we're looking for. We lost a bunch of wonder winners out there on this one, didn't we? Fifty-one of you guessed Apple. And that's a pretty valiant guess because they did hit two trillion. Not first. That's how we get you. Seventeen got Saudi Aramco, and that's how we play one to win, baby. Pew 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 pew. That's me shooting little tiny celebration guns into the air. Let's move on to Q eleven, the second to last question. How do we always burn through so quick? I feel like we just started. Here we go. Q eleven. Q eleven. When will the next leap second be added? Is it June 2022, December 2023, or not yet known? What will the next leap second be added? Ooh, baby, I got to admit to you, I didn't even know that a leap second was a thing. And it's another question about time. Heads up, we really like sub the subject of time. So reading up on time, be worth your while. If you want to bag some more wins here on One to Win, leap seconds are small adjustments to every now and then. They're small second adjustments added every now and then, minutes that last 61 seconds instead of 60 seconds. And this is done to compensate for irregularities in the Earth's rotation. They're always added in June or December. 27 of them have been added so far, the latest one being in 2016. The International Earth Rotation and Reference Systems Service. The place is responsible for inserting them, and they usually announce them well in advance. So people can prepare. Their latest announcement was made two days ago, and they said that the next leap second be added in June of 2022. So I guess that means we don't know yet. We don't know yet is the answer for question number 11. Not yet known. 27 one to winners knew that it was not yet known. And the rest of you, I guess, just took on some uh, some good guesses, you know. June 2022 would probably have been my guess, but they said it's not. So we are moving on now, ladies, gentlemen, dogs, cats, frogs, everything in between, to Q10 for our first game of 2022. Oh, come on. Question 12. Here we go. 
Question 12. What programming language were the first native iPhones apps built with? Was it Java, Objective-C, or Swift? What programming language were the first native iPhone apps built with? Woof, there are some wordy, wordy questions to say. That is time right there. Any iOS developers in the house? If so, sorry to hear that. Wah, wah, wah. Just kidding. Here's the deal. When the iPhone first came out back in 2007, it actually didn't have any support for third-party apps. Yep, no app store at all. How did we survive? Hard to imagine a phone without one now, though. Steve Jobs said something like, if you want to make an app, just make a website that works well on the iPhone. Eventually, though, they came around, released native development kits, and created the App Store. And their programming language they inflicted onto their developers was not Swift, which was created in 2014, nor was it Java, which was Google's language of choice for Android apps. It was Objective C. Objective C, 39 Wonder Winners getting our final question correctly. That's it. That's the game, friends. How'd everyone do? We had 121. I think this might be our biggest game yet so far. 121 players. Thanks for playing, everybody. Uh, and if you had fun, like, tell your friends, you know? We tweet about it, and we're on Twitter and all the social media places. Tell your friends. Now, let, now it's time to see how you did. So 120 players in the chat. Let's see those numbers of what place you think you came in today. Someone's got to say number one, and someone's got to say 120. Everyone's going to say 120, but I want to see some like, oh, there's a the 120. Angie, come on. Well, listen, Angie got Rainbow, her dog, featured today, so she can afford the blow of being 120th. I think I was last. Everyone always thinks they're last. Where's the team spirit? Where's the positive attitude? I would say number one, even though, there we go. Loco says number one, obviously. Obviously, that's the attitude. Sentino, uh, number one. Genius said 99.99999. You know what I mean? You gotta love you, genius. Thanks for playing, everyone. Um, I love seeing all this. I'm not seeing it. There's number one right there. I love a number one. Let's go ahead and just cut to the chase and announce the winner. Should we do that? Let's go ahead. And today's winners are. <laughs> Sombrero bringing home the gold with 11 correct answers in 57.68 seconds. Jeffrey, correct answers in 42.08 seconds. And in third place today, congratulations to Matt with 10 correct answers in 42.91 seconds. 25 bucks, Urban Sombrero. If you're in the market of making tie-dye sweatshirts, I'm a medium, but you don't have to. One to a medium, do you know what I mean? Uh, that's it. That's one to one. Everybody, congrats to all of our winners and congrats to everyone for playing. If you didn't snag any prizes this time, guess what? Again, next week, we do this every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, same bat time, same bat channel. You can go ahead and sign up for text alerts on 12.win, which is our website. You know, it's been my pleasure to do this with y'all. I'm Timothy Dunn, and as always, if you had any fun today, if this uplifted your spirits, if this made you smile, I challenge you to go ahead and do something nice for someone else in your life, because joy is not meant to be kept. Joy is meant to be shared. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all on Twitter.com or in my sweet, sweet dreams. If no one told you this yet today, I love you, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.